The real question is, what are you going to do about it? Hi, Chuck Burns here, and I you know, thanks for watching my YouTube channel. I haven't made a video for a while now, and there's a reason for that. I haven't no one that, like, known or felt, had like, a good feeling on what to say lately. Because, you know, I mean, I have all these things I've talked about before in my YouTube channel videos I've made, you know, reporting my point of view. But at the same time, though, I don't know what it's going to take to make some of these changes happen in our country. Return to individual freedom, self, personal responsibility, and liberty. And I watch the current events as they go down. I say something has to be done. I look at Eric Garner and Michael, Michael Brown. Two cases where a black man was killed by cops, neither of which I think have anything to do with race. Neither of them. And one incident we have the media lying, making somebody be a hero that's not. In the other incident, we have somebody who legitimately was killed by a police officer who broke policy, and the cop, neither in neither case was a cop indicted. One he should have been, the Eric Garner case. We have to, and I've, I've decided to make this video, and it's brought some of my thoughts I've had recently to a head, realizing something has to be done, because if we look at the Michael Brown and Eric Garner cases, we'll see something very disturbing with the protests, one more so than the other. But both of them, in actuality, both are being hijacked by, by a group of people, people who are radical insurgents, who want to see the end of American values, free market economy, everything that makes us great, and for you protesters, the very thing that you are using right now, your freedom of speech. We have to look in both cases and see, especially in the Ferguson case, if these people are using this pair of instances, these pair of instances to push an agenda, which is communism, or basically collectivism. You know, uh, the old, oldest enemy of the free market in the world, and then Freedom failed every time, but some for some for some reason, people seem to want to rehash it. Now in Ferguson, where it was unjustified, where or sorry, Eric Garner, where it was unjustified, the protests have been peaceful. It's been harder for them to hijack that. But sorry, the Garner, they've been peaceful, harder to hijack. Important to make that differentiation because see, the Garner incident was really repugnant. It was actually a it was a crime what happened. If this officer broke policy, he's not being punished for it, then what is the, why do officers fall policy then? Why don't, they, why don't they start choke holding everybody? Because if nothing's going to happen when they do and they kill somebody, when is something going to happen? Let's ask that question right off the bat. Now in the Ferguson case, you know, I'm sorry, I think there's a couple things that, you know, um, the officer could have done that could have kept this from happening. I think there's different things he should have, at there's certain points he should have waited for backup, I don't think he, Michael Brown would have charged at two cops with guns instead of one. I don't think that he should have, when he, when he um, was attacked by him in the car, why did he not just hit the gas and get the hell out of there and go, then go get, wait for backup to arrive? Why get out of the fucking vehicle? Really? I mean, at the same time, though, it's not his fault. It's how he's taught to act. Which is still uh, the other part of this, which is about the militarization of our police. But I'll go there in a second. We continue with Michael Brown real quick. See, based on what he, how he's taught to act and what he thinks is acceptable and okay, he was within his rights to shoot the guy, shoot Michael Brown. He was aggressive towards him. The witnesses say that. They agree with that statement. In fact, now two of the witnesses that witnessed it have been found dead. And they're the ones that said that Michael Brown was an aggressor. Oh, that's not being covered. I wonder why. In the media, MSM, the media, fucking mainstream crap, crap heads. I mean, but either way, that one is violent. The Michael Brown said they're violent. Why? You know why? Because they have less ground to stand on. And when you don't have the facts on your side, you have to be ridiculous and just get people to just get caught up in the hype of it. That's the one where we really see the communists showing up. You say, you want to stop police violence, start a communist revolution. There's videos you can listen to all over the internet where there's people are saying that in front of the Ferguson police station. You see signs for comedy in the back. It's, they're being hi hijacked by the radical left. And if we don't get this straight pretty soon, where we want our country to go, we're going to be fucked. Because they're, they're, they're planning action. Go to the, Fer the, the, um, Fer the Ferguson um, Planned Activism. There's some, I have, uh, I'll try to post a link. with. I'll put it in the description later on. If I don't have it up there yet, just come back. But um, it's to a 
group that's like planning protests. It's on Tumblr, by the way. If you look at Ferguson Planned Action, you know, whatever, you probably find it on Tumblr if you search that. Ferguson Planned Action page, there's a list of events they're doing. They're doing these, like, one of where I used to live in Thousand Oaks, California, a very white area. It's like they're, they're taking this outside of there, and they're taking it to places that are, like, non-minority, and they're trying to blow this up. It's pretty crazy what's happening. Now, when I say we all have to get the same page and stop this from continuing, and we have to get this our country back together, what I mean by that is this. I mean that both sides, Republicans and Democrats, have to realize that, you, honestly, the establishment... Republicans, Democrats, not you, but the establishment, they're all the same. I mean, they both don't want smaller government. They both want to tax you. Just one was suspended on war, and one was suspended on welfare. Okay? Let's get this right. Neither one of those are good choices. Look at warfare. Okay? I'll start with Republicans, person, people I used to identify with but much more heavily. They, we have not left, the, almost every country we go and fight in, we've, we haven't left yet. I mean, World War II, Germany and Japan, we have bases where? Okinawa, and Germany, I mean, still to this day, we, how long ago was that war, right? 70 fucking years almost, yes, pretty much. We're still there? Korea, we're still there? It astounds me how stupid people must be to not see this. If you ever think that far, interventionist foreign policy is going and get involved in the world is a good idea, you need to read... George Washington's farewell address in 1796 after his second term. A man I listened to because he could have been king. They would have made him like president for life. And he said no. He said no because he knew it wasn't right and it wouldn't be good for freedom. So I listen to a man like that who turns down ultimate power to do the moral and upright and just thing. I listen to a guy like that pretty, pretty thoroughly. Read that. He's speaking to us from the past prophetically about our future. And where we are right now. About how if we get caught up with other nations, we will eventually become the satellites of them and they will be a burden to us. Get it get it right, America, get it untwisted right now. And then you liberals who think you can take from me, or anybody for that matter, and give it to charity, and your bullshit charity, your welfare, it's not charity perpetuates a state of sloth. When people in the world, like 100 years ago, 40, 50 years ago, before welfare was what it is now, before the 60s actually, when, you know, what happened when people lost their jobs? Was there was this rash of people losing houses and stuff? Was there all these things like, that, were, that you're trying to stop with these programs happening? No, because the community around them helped them. Because they were getting help locally, they felt more obligated to do, to do more and try harder to get out of that situation because they had to feel guilty looking at the person in the eye they took the money from. Instead, now they get a faceless check from the government that they, that they don't feel any obligation to and they think they're just owed. Nobody is owed anything they don't earn. Got it? And furthermore, when you give money to the welfare state, do you know what you do? You throw away half of the money it never gets to the people you want to help. Because what does half that money go to fund? It goes to the bureaucracy, the pensions and retirements of all these people that are running the program. If we took personal responsibility for our, ourselves, our community, and helped our neighbors, every penny would go to helping people. And how much more good would that do? So grow some balls and some responsibility and some self-respect and stop throwing away half the country's money on BS bullshit. Pensions, programs, paid junkets to freaking go scout out press conference centers so they can have their annual meetings. And why don't you just help your own community? And some of us won't want to, but see, we could give half the money we do right now and do the same amount of good because I just said half the money in the programs just goes to the people running them. So that's okay. See, you can be a social conservative, a social liberal, and still agree that everybody should be free. Yeah. As far as the social conservative thing, social conservatives, people have a right to be happy. If they're gay, I don't, I don't think it's not my personal thing I would ever do, and I think it's kind of gross in a little bit of a way, but I would never say that. But I do think that 
that gay people should have the right to be together if they want. And honestly, who cares? Right? What's it do to you? And but on that topic, I think the government should just be out of the marriage business. There's a pastor who wants to marry two gay guys. Let him marry two gay guys. I don't give a damn. That's his business. Between them and God, right? I mean, if you're Christians, they'll get dealt with in the end, right? So let it be. And as far as benefits of marriage, the reason I think that they should have the right to be joined is because there's things like the hospital where they only want to let family members in when you're sick. If one of the couple is dying, this gay couple, he can't go see his lover in the hospital ER as he's passing away. So there needs to be the same rights afforded. But as far as like the, the other things, the tax benefits, that's our topic. Why is one person more, more why, is, why is two people better or get a break that one person doesn't get? Why is he less special than them? Do away with that shit. But the fact of the matter is, social conservatives, you need to take your, your politically held or politically enforced social beliefs and not force them down other people's throats. I don't want abortion being funded by my taxes, but I don't think I got a right to tell somebody to do their body. It's inside of her. It's, okay, I don't like it. It shouldn't, it shouldn't get killed. I don't agree with abortion, but hey, it's not your body. It's hers. Between her, God, and the doctor, right? She'll get dealt with, right? So back up. Because see, when you open the door to this, then you have the social beliefs of liberals. Then they want to say, oh, well, you're going to do that with yours? We're going to do that with ours. We're going to enforce our beliefs on you. See where this is all gone? This is what I'm talking about, how our country needs to get its shit together and get it together now. That's why this is the first video I've done with the American flag upside down behind me. Because we have communists in the streets trying to use what is truly a sad incident, incident in Eric Garner's case of police power and abuse. And in the Michael Brown case, uh, it also it shows a po police policy problem where they think that they're there's the heroes, they gotta be warrior cop and chase this guy down instead of calling for backup. You know, and then we, and we make, it, make them think that it's okay to do that. I mean, really. Communists are using this to try to subvert our country. And we've so poorly educated our children in the schools that they think that we live in a capitalist country, not a, not a corporatist cronyism country. That's really what it is, corporatist cronyism. We live in now. Because you can donate the money to the political coffers or whoever, you get contracts. Look at Feinstein's husband here in California. Every time a base closes, he's the one who liquefies all the, liquidates all the shit there. And the Republicans are just as guilty. Look at McConnell bringing home, they're talking about overspending and the bill it up, but he brings home a couple hundred million dollar dam project to his state. Neither side is innocent. Both sides are guilty for certain. But there is a common uniting language between us, freedom and liberty, and the freedom of the individual. We have to start learning that we're democracy. We are, we, are not, we are not a democracy. We are a republic. Democracy is mob rule. Our founders did not make us a pure democracy in the beginning because of that. In the beginning, our Senate, if you didn't know this, wasn't even picked by the people. It was picked by the state as a check on federal power. But, oh, we want to go to democracy, and we changed that in the Constitution. Fucked up what our founders made. Wake up. Wake up. Federal Reserve System that loans us money and we pay interest on it. But I thought it was our Federal Reserve. Why would we make, make ourselves pay interest? Why don't we start living within our means, not spending more than we have every single year? We have $18 trillion in debt and over $100 trillion unfunded liability. Do we not get this? Are we thick? We must be. Wake the heck up. It saddens me to watch our current media just bring, run circles around the ever so distracted topic or public with topics changing so, so fast, so quickly and never one of them covered truthfully. The time has come where if we want our country to change, we want our country to go back to being a free country from where we currently are, which is slaves. We need to think quick. If you don't think we're a slave, consider this. You own a vehicle, most people do, a car, right? 
Supreme Court ruled in the case Shuttleworth versus Birmingham. If something is a right, it truly really is a right. You have the right. Exor- you have the right to exercise that right with impunity. You also cannot be charged a fee for exercising that right, nor can you be required to get a license or permit to exercise it. What is registration on your car? If owning property is a right that we have as Americans, property ownership is one of the key and essential rights of liberty, of being free. If you don't have that, you're not free if you can't own property. You can't keep what you make. You have to be free. You have to own your own shit. Now, how can they get away charging us for registration every year? If that's a right I have to own property, like I said, fee, permit, or license cannot be required. Why are we paying for the, for the fee for the permit every fucking year? Because they've made you. Because if you don't, what do they do? They impound your car. You have a right to travel, but if you don't get a license, they fucking take your car, throw you in jail. In some states. In most states, if you do it more than once, yeah. Quite frequently, if you're like the second or third time, they'll arrest you, especially here in California. So are you free? Truly? Free? Or are you given just enough freedom to think you're free? Yeah, that's what I thought. Just enough. Wake up, bros. Because from here, where we are, I don't see it getting better. Unless we can put aside our bullshit and stop trying to make each other do what the other, make the other person do what we want, and make each other make each other each other's bitch, and just say, you know what, we just need to be Americans. And get over that other crap. And live in a fiscally responsible, individually free, small government paradise like our founders were hoping and intended. Not paradise because nothing's perfect, but compared to the rest of the world, it used to be. Oh, hell yeah. This is Chuck Brins for the USA. Signing off and saying thank you for watching this video. There's more to come after this. I've been quiet for a while now, and I'm tired of being quiet. I, I, can't, I can't do it anymore. I can't watch communists in my streets doing this kind of stuff. Wake up, people. Look around. It's getting bad. Peace.